Welcome back. I know Saturday's weather was a little questionable at some places and some tracks did not get in their racing programs. But Friday was a great night to be at the races and I found myself at Dog Hollow Speedway. The Pure Stocks were the first feature event of the evening. Matt Summers in the 78 leads the field to the green. Behind him is a four-way battle for second with the 2W of Justin Queen darting to the inside. Down the backstretch, he would drag race John Maisie for the position. For a few laps, Queen chased Summers. Here, Queen looks to take the lead. As he slides up into Summers, he cuts his right front tire. Then, nearly collects Jeremy Schaefer as he tries to get to the infield. Here's the restart with four laps remaining. Schaefer has now moved up to second behind Summers. Maisie holds third, while the 44 of Joey Petyak races side by side with Mike Silk for fourth. Off of turn two, they get together with Petyak now trying to hold off Charlie Boring. Ahead of them, Schaefer is now looking low to take over the lead. At the stripe, he has the spot with three laps to go. On the last lap, Petyak would take third away from Maisie while Schaefer holds off Summers for the win. Here are your top five finishers in the Pure Stocks. It's Schaefer followed by Matt Summers, Joey Petyak, Crazy John Maisie, and Tim Lockard. In the fast track late models, Mike Lockard takes the early lead while the 31 of Brian Force works the low side in a battle for second with Ken Herman. Going into turn three, Herman has a slight advantage as Force has to contend with Dan Karolagas. We have a restart with one lap in the books. Here Force spins out trying to overtake Karolagas. Six cars are involved in the incident. After a couple of quick cautions, the Greek is sent to the back for jumping the gun on restarts. After two more cautions, the top three of Lockard, Herman, and Andrew Wiley ran single file for a few laps. Late in the race, Karolagas has worked his way up to fourth and is closing in on Wiley. On the last lap, Herman gets within a car length of the 38 machine, but it's Mike Lockard picking up his first late model win. Mike, congratulations, your first win in a late model. Yeah, it's been a long time and just a bad luck and we know we should finally shook it here, so hopefully our luck will start changing. Now you won a lot in the street stock, so this has got to feel good now you got one of the late models. Yeah, it feels real good, finally. The street stocks we had figured out, these are a little bit different, so it took a little while to get it figured out, but I had the right help, so I got Paul McNee and Rudy and Terry Pissarro, those guys helped me out a lot and they got us here. When you've had so much success over the years and now all of a sudden it, it, it takes a while to get a win, does that wear on you at all? No, definitely. It is. We had plenty of nights we discussed it. it just, we were ready to give it up because we, when you're used to running up front, you like to be, you know, be a contender. You like to stay a contender, but we faded off there for a while and now we've got it back. Hopefully we can keep it for a little while. So it's Mike Locker picking up his first late model win, followed by Ken Herman, Andrew Wiley, Dan Karolagas, who overcame his penalty, and Joey Falenti. Now on to the super late models. 28 Clay Copeman has the pole position with the 17 of Doug Glessner starting second. In the first turn, it's the two of Sammy Style working the low side and John Britsky in the 18 battling for third. Britsky then completes the pass. One lap in, we have this mess. One driver of note in the incident is Tiger Tom Erickson driving for Gene Kane. On the restart, Britsky will make it three wide as he tries to get under Glessner. He holds it low into one and powers off to take second. While third through sixth gets spread out, last week's winner, Dane Laraway, is charging towards the front. Here is Stahl racing his way into second place as Britsky falls back to third. On lap 17, Stahl has been inching closer to taking the lead away from Copeman but going into turn one, he gets a better run and hits Copeman, spinning himself out. Down the stretch, Copeman was able to hold off Britsky for the win. Laraway worked his way up to third. Billy Esch and Dwayne Tannehill had solid top five runs as well. Next up, the four cylinders. On a lap two restart, the 13 of Adam Pletcher is just flying through the field. He had already won three times this season. Here we have a battle for the lead, and watch out, here comes the 13 machine, right up through the middle. Pletcher would win convincingly to pick up win number four on the season. Congratulations, Adam, you certainly make this look easy. Uh, it's definitely not easy, but thank you. <laughs> now, uh, you came back, you've won four races, uh, you rolled your old car, but you came back and winning style with this one. 
Yeah, a few weeks ago, uh, I was trying to take the lead. I went a little too low and hit a uke tire and rolled several times and landed on my roof. So uh, I built a new car and it seemed to be all right. I got to keep all, most of my stuff out of it. So uh, we'll see what happens for the rest of the season. Now uh, you have some people saying that maybe the car isn't quite legal. You're offering to have the thing torn down uh, next Friday at the races. Um, what's your stance on this? Uh, yeah, I'm just tired of everybody, you know, assuming that I'm cheating because I had won a few races and I just think I found a lucky, you know, lucky hit here with the car and the motor and, you know, I set my car up a little bit and uh, I'm willing to rip it down so everybody's, you know, can stop calling me a cheater and realize that I'm just, you know, winning fair and square and I'm just racing. Uh, as a driver, when you hear, the, you know, the people chiming in and calling you a cheater, how does that make you feel? I actually like it because then I know they're, I'm on their mind. I mean. Last year, I mean, I've been racing for three years now, and every year I get beat and beat by neons and neons, you know, and, there's, and I know that they cheated, which is fine, because, I mean, racing is racing. I don't complain. But uh, when they, they call me a cheater, I just wave and say hi and thanks, and, you know, at least I know they're thinking about me. So here's your top five in the four cylinders. It will be interesting to see what happens next Friday. In the modified four cylinders, it was Tom Pavelko taking the victory. And in the street stocks, it was Nick Goss picking up the victory. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the McNeese and everyone at Dog Hollow Speedway for the cooperation and kind words. Coming up, the Saturday night series from Williams Grove Speedway. Keep it right here. Pit Pass will return after this.